who are the most dangerous men on earth? Well, um, it's not really a matter of my opinion. It's a matter of historical documented facts. The men who have been able to be the most successful in warfare, the men with the most heroic feats of accomplishment in battle. Um, those men are wasps, W-A-S-P. You say, um, we are Satan's people or something? No, that was some heavy metal band that came out and tried to pervert what the WASP acronym actually means. Um, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And, you know, um, for those of us who are white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, and I am that, um, my ancestors go back to Germany and Scotland, uh, some in Bavaria and some a little bit in Switzerland and things, and I have the genealogy that I can go back 10 you know, 14 generations back, and it's all German. Um, a lot of people think I'm Jewish or something. I look Jewish or whatever else. Well, can't help you there. I'm not Jewish. Um, I'm a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And there's a lot of talk in the media that the white nationalists or white Anglo-Saxon Protestants are a terror group. Just saw something this morning about some some Fruit Loop, and he was saying about the white men in this nation are the problem and, and um, all this other stuff. Uh, and that we have white privilege and you know, all the satanic filth that's come out. And it's all racism aimed at people like me. You know why? Because Satan's people fear the wasps. That's what they fear. And this is a call to action to all the other white Anglo-Saxon Protestants out there. I'm not saying white Anglo-Saxon Catholic. Okay, Anglo-Saxon, by the way, just as meaning Anglo, the uh, people of England and Saxon, Saxony, the white, you know, British and German type of people, most of the, you know, Northern European tribes and things. If you go back to the ancient Celtic Empire, which would have been there in the first century or so. But <clears throat> this is a call to action to the men out there because, you see, the media makes no qualms about saying that we are the enemy, that we're the bad guys. And you say, what about the white Anglo-Saxon Catholics? Like I said, no. They're not an end, a danger because the Pope can tell them what to do and they'll meekly say, oh, yes, Holy Father, you know, and whatever else, call this wicked devil the Holy Father. Um, they're not the threat. Um, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants have proved themselves for centuries, for, nay, for millennia, of being very strong people. Uh, we are very warlike. Um, toxic masculinity. <laughs> Stupid. Um, <clears throat> I have behind me here this is a sword replica of what Oliver Cromwell carried into battle. I'll show you here on the blade. Okay, I have that right. Cromwell. Right there it is. Basket hilt type of sword for cavalry. And he's going into battle and he's hacking and whacking and slicing and things. Um, great man in battle. When he was leading troops, he never lost one battle, ever. Um, Catholics get all excited and whatever else. Oh, he killed Catholics and things. Yeah, well, what were the Catholics doing? Well, they won't talk about that. But, um, so, there's that. Here you have an Italian longsword. I've been collecting knives and swords since I was a boy. So, you know, this collection goes back many years. Um, people have seen this thing down through the years, but this is an Italian longsword. Again, you know, you had northern Italian, you know, the Waldenses and things that fought against Rome. Um, they would be included in a lot of the Nordic barbarian type tribes. Of course, here you have a uh, Viking sword, sort of a one-handed sword. Right there. Pretty long one. So there's your Viking sword. I mean, study the, the history of the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. And um, we like to fight. <laughs> and I can tell you, my, uh, the history of, of uh, my family and everything else, we fought all the time. <laughs> and uh, other wasps that I knew growing up, they fought too. And I mean, we fought in high school, we beat each other up in things, and we we're always competition, you know, and racing. And I mean, we, when I was a, a young man, we used to play motorcycle tag, we called it. <laughs> It's not as bad as it sounds. You know, we didn't actually hit each other with bikes. 
on purpose. We did it accidentally, but uh, playing tag. But we had this hard plastic ball, and we'd you know cruise around on our dirt bikes, and you get close to a guy, and you'd throw the ball at him, and if you hit him, then he's it, and then you get to take off running. And I mean, the accidents we had. Uh, I had a four wheeler we were playing at the one time in the Yamaha Banshee, and and I hit a tree, you know smacked into a tree I wasn't looking back and smacked into a tree and it jumped up like that and my foot went down and got under the rear tire and pulled me down underneath and the, my buddy ran, came up beside me another German and he said hey are you all right and I was uh, underneath the floor and I was like, yeah I think so and he takes the ball and goes wham you're it <laughs> takes off um we played rough we did um that's the way it was because it's my heritage. Here's a little kind of a bearded axe, you know, type, type of a thing, little one-handed axe, you know, that some of my ancestors would have used. I love axes. Um, here's a bigger one, sort of a two-handed axe. I have to cut this part of the wood off up here, but um, Danish type of axe, I think they call that, a Dane axe. Um, and then, of course, this is my favorite one. This kind of goes back to the my uh, Campbell clan ancestry. Here we have a great sword. Let's see if I can get it all on camera there. Um, this one here is a or a hand two-handed sword. You can hold it like this. You can hold it like this, and you know, like that. But you can use it as a spear kind of a thing or you can come in and, and you know whack a guy off of his horse with it you know this this isn't something that's easy to wield in battle i can't really swing it around too much here because i'm going to hit something you know get the camera or whatever else he said why are you showing all those weapons you must be militaristic yeah i am i am you see that's what i'm supposed to be i'm a white anglo-saxon protestant and i'm not going to change that that's who i am it's my ancestry this is my history, not a passive whatever else kind of a thing. You can't come to me and say I need to change who I am. I retain the right to protest things that I see that are wrong. It's, it's in my blood. It's, it's who I'm supposed to be. Oh, the white power structure that's doing all this evil. Yeah, what's it take to fight that? It takes wasps to fight against the white power structure. We see wrong, we see injustice, and we take up the sword and we say, Hey, you know what? That's wrong. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to fight against that. I've been doing that ever since I've been in ministry. Fighting wrongs and injustice. That's what I'm supposed to do. So somebody comes out and they say, you need to stop fighting. I look at them as an enemy. You just have to learn to enjoy life and not fight things. <laughs> how dull, how uh, depressing to think that I'm not allowed to fight. I can't protest anything. What a horrible thing to look at. Genesis chapter 9 verse 27 says, God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. That's a future prophecy. Did it happen? Well, I just think that there's a racist undertone here. I just think that you're saying that white people should be enlarged. Uh, that's what Noah said. I didn't write that. That's not me that spoke that. Did it happen? Yeah. It's happened. And you look at the wars down through the centuries and things. God enlarges Japheth, the sons of Japheth, the white races. That's just a fact. It's a historical fact. You want proof that the Bible's true? You foolish atheists out there? Okay, way back there, God spoke through Noah and he said, God shall enlarge Japheth and he will dwell in the tents of Shem. That's why I'm here in America. This, this is the tents of Shem, this country here. The, the land where Shem lives, the Shemitic people, the Shemitic people that includes the Jews and the Orientals and the indigenous Native American people. And I'll tell you right now, um, I was raised, I had some German culture stuff, you know, sure, growing up, but I was pretty much raised as a Native American um, in many ways. Uh, might shock some people to know that, you know, I'm not we weren't Native American. I didn't run around with a loincloth on or something. <laughs> you know, Native Americans don't either. I'm not trying to, you know, you're stereotyping it, whatever. I'm saying that's not how it was. But the whole point is I learned to hunt. I learned to fish. I learned to forage for wild edibles. 
And my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, Bernard Fry, he taught me a lot about how the Native Americans would use different things. Well, here's a spice bush. They would use this for this purpose and whatever, and they would this over here, they would use that. And, and he taught me a lot of that. And I retain that knowledge still today. And I remember I'd get on the school bus, you know, and I'd, I'd have a handful of berries or something. I'm eating the berries and other children, be, what are you eating? <laughs> you know, oh, just some berries I picked out there. You're weird. And you know where the, uh, you know where the school bus took me when I got to be older? Pequay Valley High School. Hmm, Pequay Valley? You mean a Indian name? Native American? Yeah. And uh, when I left there, or when I was not wanting to go to school, I'd play hooky. <laughs> I truly played hooky because I'd be fishing with you know fish hooks. And when I wanted to play hooky, you know where I went? To the Susquehanna River. Pequay Valley, Susquehanna. I was raised all around Native American people and even to this day the Penobscot Nation they own land up near the Wolfton thing that the wicked mine that they're trying to get through up here and um, they don't own the land unfortunately but uh, Wolfton's trying to put a mine in there to mess up the Penobscot Nation's native you know area up there and things in the headwaters of a lot of the rivers and the Holton Band of Maliseets over this way they're also involved and they're both trying to stop this mining thing I am fighting to defend their rights to this land. You know why? Because it's not my land. It belongs to the Shemitic people. I'm here dwelling in the tents of Shem. Why? Because God enlarged me. God said, I'm going to move you away from Germany back in 17, early 1700s. Bring my ancestors here to America and we're going to enlarge you. You're not going to be stuck on you know, just a few acres of land over there in Germany because there's not a whole lot of land for everybody. No, I'm going to send you to America and you'll have hundreds of acres over there. And if you work hard for me, I will prosper you. That's my ancestral heritage. And if you are a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, if you can trace back to the French, the Northern Italians, the British, the German, you know, Swedish, all those things like that, and you protest things, you're not a Roman Catholic, you're a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant as well. And Satan's people hate us a lot because we have historically made problems for them. William Tyndale, he was a wasp. Martin Luther, he was a wasp. You say, well, Martin Luther had issues and things. How do we really know? I mean, I've been back and forth on the issue of Martin Luther for so many years. And I hear people say, oh, he believed in this and he believed in that. He couldn't be a saved, whatever. How do I even know what the guy really wrote and believed? I mean, his works could have been so corrupted you know, over the last 500 years. I don't know. I appreciate what he did. I mean, that's part of historical fact. Brought out the Heilige Schrift, which I have right down there. The Holy Scriptures. Used the Textus Receptus to do it. Good for him. Made some real problems for the Roman Catholic Church. Good for him. He was a wasp. Saved or lost, he was a wasp. And uh, let me just make a little statement on that, too. Lord gave me this statement here. Ready? A Protestant doesn't have to be a Christian. Do you protest Rome? Do you protest in, uh, too high of taxation, you know, taxation without representation? Do you protest that? I hope so. If you're a red-blooded man, you need to protest things. A Protestant does not, doesn't have to be a Christian, but a Christian must be a Protestant. Oh, no, no, I, I can be a, you know, a Christian without being a Protestant. No, you can't. No, you can't. Um, during, back during the whole thing that happened here the last couple of years, a lot of Catholics were told to do things that went against their beliefs, went against the catechism, because the uh, Pope said so. And, oh, okay, um, you know, and they, they submit themselves. That's wrong. That's not the stand of a Christian. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to give you some real advice now. Some things that you can do. Um, I'm not about to deny Bible prophecy. I know things are going to get worse and worse. I understand all of that. I understand that the New World Order is going to come in and the Antichrist is going to show up and everything else. 
But you know what? My Bible tells me I'm supposed to hinder that system. My Bible tells me that I should strengthen the things that remain. Okay? Old Testament, I realize, but it's instruction in righteousness. Um, I'm not supposed to just say, well, okay, I'll be passive. I'll just become a papist or something like that. And whatever the Holy Father says, I'll just go along with it and cross myself or something. Cross my heart and hope to die, you know. Uh, no. I'm not okay with a bunch of wicked liberals getting on TV and condemning me for who I am. I haven't even done any crimes or any kind of evil or anything else, but I'm a white man, Anglo-Saxon, and I protest things. I'm a Protestant. I'm a wasp. And that makes me the worst kind of terrorist in the world or something. I don't recall burning any cities down. Uh, I don't do that. Oh, that's Black Lives Matter, that racist terrorist organization. I'm not out marching the streets trying to get people to be okay with my perversion, like the whatever LGBT, what all the other things. It's wrong. It's wickedness. They're coming after me, my race, my ethnicity, who I am, my very makeup, everything about me is under threat. And I see statues of other wasps in this country, and they're tearing these statues down. That makes me mad. You see, nationalism is of God. Globalism is of the devil. God created the nations. They're all coming together at the Tower of Babel. God says, separate, spread out. No, we're not going to do that. Okay, then I'm going to confound your language. I don't want you getting all together. I want there to be division, separation, segregation. Not because one's better than the other. Not because we want to wipe somebody else out. No, because I want you to be separate. God creates beauty. He just creates distinction. That's the whole point here. I'm not going to force my culture on other people. I'm not going to say, hey, to the Native American people, I've met them in the area. I've talked to them. Tell them about my, I'm trying to fight for them. And they're very thankful for it. And I don't say, hey, by the way, you know, I realize you're of the Penobscot Nation, but um, you need to be just like me. You need to listen to the music that my ancestors listened to. You need to celebrate the holidays my ancestors celebrated and whatever else. And you know what? Get a chance to witness to a guy like that. I've talked to them. It didn't come up and whatever. And I don't cram it and force it on people and whatever else because I have to you know, reach my Baptist salvation quota or something. No. If the Lord doesn't open up a door of, of utterance and door to witness to somebody, I don't say anything. I'll say a few little things here and there to kind of hint, you know, drop a few seeds. But I'm not going to just, you know, if you were to die today, do you know for sure where you could go or where you would go and all that stuff? If the Lord doesn't open it up, I'm not going to say anything. That's just the way it is. Um, I've, I did the whole, you know, forced conversion, cram it down your throat thing, going knocking on their doors on a Saturday morning. I did all that stuff for years. Never worked out. It's all fake. You know, oh, we got, we had, you know, 12 decisions this morning and then they don't show up for church or they come for a week or two and then they're gone. You know, whatever. Watch my uh, video, The Dangers of Hyper Soul Winning, if you want more information on that. But the fact of the matter is, if I would get a native guy saved, if the Lord would allow me to do that, lead him to Jesus Christ, you know what I would do? Continue to practice your culture. You're a Shemitic man. A Native American, indigenous, whatever you want to call. People get so offended at everything nowadays. I don't care. If you know somebody calls me a wasp or a, a you know kraut or something like that because I'm German ancestry, <laughs> whatever. I'm not so thin skinned that it would bother me. But hey, maintain your culture. Don't become like me. That's the teaching of the scriptures. But I'm talking right now to the other wasps out there. And it's very important that you embrace that and you don't be ashamed of it. Oh, bow down. I'm going to say I'm sorry for being white or something. Ugh. <laughs> Instant blood pressure spike for me when I see that kind of thing. It's nonsense. I saw a, a video not long ago. Um, there was a white police officer called to a black neighborhood and the blacks yelled at him and forced him to get back into his police car. We don't want you around here, white man. And all this stuff. That's racism. I mean, isn't that racism? They're attacking a guy because he's white? They called the police, shows up, and it's one white officer and two black officers. They say, okay, we're fine with the black officers, but we don't want that white one here. That's racism. And as it's been pointed out so many times now, if it was reversed and it was all white people and a black police officer showed up, hey, we don't want you here. 
dealt with a black police officer many years ago, a big, huge guy, just gigantic man. And um, we took out three gridlocks of electricity New Year's Eve, back when I was in high school. We were out messing around, weren't paying attention where we were going. My friend, another German, um, he went off the road, took out a, the ground wire for a pole and knocked the pole out, took the, all the wires down. <laughs> and uh, again, a rough, you know, childhood that I had. And um, this big black police officer comes. And I remember that guy, ex-Marine, you know, he told us about that. And um, he got us in the car and everything. He had to take us home because the car was totaled and uh, took us home. And he laid into us, yelling at us. Things. <laughs> I don't know if he was a drill instructor or what, but he, he had the, um, you know, the personality and whatever for a, a DI. And, and we're sitting back there going, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I didn't say, oh, wait a second. Oh, there's a black police officer. I want a white cop because I'm not mentally disturbed up here. I'm not a racist. But uh, I'm going to give you some advice, all right, to the other wasps out there. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Let's read that. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Can we see that today? Yes. Are we dealing with spiritual wickedness in high places? Yes, we are. The tyrants and everything else out there, these people are just openly worshiping Satan, and we're just sitting here just going, you know, uh, just passively watching it. We need to be wasps. Why do you think that they're so afraid of wasps? Because wasps sting people. Wasps are the, they're just, they'll keep to themselves. I'm here making my nest or whatever else. Leave me alone. But you come, you start to rattle me, you start to hit me around and make things happen. I'm coming out and I'm going to sting you. And it doesn't matter if you're bigger than me. It doesn't matter if you are some whatever. I'm going to sting you. You might smash me, and I don't care, but I'm going to get my stinger in you. That's what a wasp is. Uh, verse 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand your ground. Don't back down. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Oh, here comes some more liberal media lies. Oh, against wasps. Well, we hate people. We're racists. We're oh, misogynistic. And all the stupid junk that they come up with. Just take the shield of faith. Just, no, nah, it doesn't get to me. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Do you have the word of God? Most wasps don't. The wasps have come along and they've gone over to the Vatican versions because the King James Bible is too hard to understand. Let me ask you a question. What Bible was used by the founding fathers of this nation? And I don't mean the, you know, the guys that signed the Declaration of Independence and everything. There were a few good guys in that. A lot of them were Freemasons and whatever. But what was the Bible used by the men who fought in the Revolutionary War? King James Bible. This nation was built upon this book. There's a quote that's often attributed to George Washington. Some say, well, he didn't exactly say that. He said something similar. But whether or not he said it, the quote is still true. All right, it's a, it's a true statement, no matter who said it. And that is, it is impossible to rightly govern without God and the Bible. There is no nation if you don't have any moral standard, absolute standard of moral truth. Thou shalt not steal. Boy, that went out the door, didn't it? And now we have all these wicked youths just going in. No fear at all. It used to be that they'd wear the face mask thing and they'd go into the store. They don't even wear it anymore. Somebody's taking a video camera and they just turn around and look right at them. Security guard standing there. They don't even say anything. They don't even say, hey, stop what you're doing. They don't even say a thing. Yeah, good idea there, you stupid, foolish atheist. Taking the Bible out of the public squares and things, or, well, the Ten Commandments monuments away. Take those away. Take the Bible out of the schools. 
I mean, you can see it. You want scientific, empirical evidence and everything else? Go back to 1963 and look at the rates of crime. Very low, almost non-existent. And look at it today, that so many people have no more knowledge of the scriptures. How do you define morality as an atheistic fool? Whatever I decide. <laughs> yeah, where does it, where's that gotten us? You need to have a King James Bible to all the wasps out there. You need to make sure that you have God's book, not some perverted thing from the Vatican. And you go down to, I have the book down here. You can watch my documentary. I prove it. Vatican II, they talk about let's make uh, translations jointly with separated brethren. Catholics and Protestants coming together. So you can't say, I have a Protestant Bible here, one that was made by wasps. No, I have one that's made by, you know, wasp NC or something. Wasps and, you know, Protestants and Catholics together. Disgusting. Praying always, verse 18, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Uh, yeah. Um, we'll get back to the thing of praying here in a little bit. All right. So first and foremost, you need a real sword. Make sure that you have the real true weapon that God used in the past. The one that en enabled us to have freedom and liberty. This book. Not your Vatican versions. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. You say, well, they, they, didn't, they used the King James back then because nothing else was available. Oh, uh, that's not true. There were a lot of new versions available. And in fact, they had the Dewey Reams. Uh, Jesuit created new version available, which has a lot of the readings in it that they now call modern updated readings. Again, proved it in my studies. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. You know what that means? No compromise. Well, you know, at my job, they put us through diversity training. Oh, well, I'm in the military, and, and they forced us to go through this thing, and we can't, I won't, don't want to misgender somebody. Get out! I mean, if you're still in the military, you probably got the hokey pokey or whatever in your shoulder, but, um, you know, you need to get out of anything anywhere out there that forces you to compromise. You're a wasp. You're not supposed to be some coward that compromises. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Here's a big one. This one gets me just enraged when I hear this. I get so sick and tired of pansy professing Christians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21. We'll begin there. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Hold fast to that which is good. Verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. How can you be preserved blameless if you're filling your eyes and your mind with the filth that comes out of Hollywood? And yet I hear it all the time among professing Christian men. Well, I do have a few movies, and I do, you know, you know what I did with my movies, my Hollywood movies, Rambo and a lot of the other war movies that I had, you know, I thought were so cool growing up. Arnold Schwartz and Stupid and all the other dumb movies like that. You know what I did with them? I burned them years ago. I got rid of them. Why? Because I'm a wasp. I'm supposed to be effective in battle. You can't be effective in battle if you're constantly filling your mind with a bunch of junk. With a bunch of wicked, satanic images. And by the way, watching movies makes you passive. Did you know that? You say, well, what, are you, what are you talking about? When's the last time you jumped up and grabbed the weapon when you saw somebody hurt in one of the movies? You don't. Because it's making you passive. Men in the past, there's somebody being hurt. Let me grab a weapon. Or, no. They're ready to go. They're ready to fight. But now, because violence and rape and whatever else, it's entertainment. Now you just get so used to it, you just become desensitized to it. I remember I got saved many years ago and I watched a movie, a Hollywood movie. Against my better judgment, I shouldn't have done that. But I was still a little baby Christian, still an idiot, like a lot of you out there. And uh, 
to try to justify your movies. And I watched this movie. I was shocked at how much profanity that movie had. One of my favorite movies. I watched it a lot as a lost man. Got saved. Man, they're cussing all through this movie. Something changed. The Holy Spirit moved in, and I didn't want to hear that stuff. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. You're not going to be effective as a soldier in battle against these evil hordes if you're watching the people that hate you. Did you ever think about that? I like these Hollywood movies. Oh man, I remember the one movie and everything. The people in Hollywood hate wasps. They can't stand you. They've been waging war for over 100 years now in popular media and things. Trying to destroy the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. They've done a pretty good job because a lot of wasps sitting around watching TV, drinking a beer. Oh, let's, I'm going to watch a bunch of grown men in tights playing with a ball while my country is eroding all around me. They're taking my money. They're taking my wealth. They're taking everything from me. Send your children off to public school and they come back screwed up. Why? Because you're too busy watching this satanic entertainment. It's put out by them. I, I, mean, I just I feel like spitting every time I see some wasp out there, and he's talking about we need to get our country back and whatever else. And you know I don't watch Disney anymore. I mean I, I do have some DVDs. You know some of the older movies that were pretty good. Uh, Walt Disney's been against America from day one. Worked to undermine America with his propaganda, satanic little. Uh, sex perversion stuff and subliminals and everything else. I mean, you can look that up stuff too if you want to be very vexed. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Give you another advice if you are a wasp. And, you know, this goes to anybody else out there too that's a Protestant. You can be a black man and, and things. Strong black man out there. There's been some great warriors and things. Um, some of the crazy stuff that they've done. And, you know, Shemitic people and whatever else. Doesn't matter. But I'm saying... I can't speak for black men because I'm not a black man. I can't speak for Orientals because I'm not Oriental. I'm a wasp. Always will be. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 through 18. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged. Ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. Now for a recompense in the same I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Okay, he's talking about there in his own bowels. He's saying in my gut feeling, essentially. Okay, get back to it here. Verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. We're supposed to be separate from the lost world. We're not supposed to fellowship with them. Because you see what happens is when you fellowship with the lost world, they will bring your standards down. That's what happens every single time. And when you become saved, when the Lord saves you and the Holy Spirit is within you, lost people will feel it when you get around them. And I've seen it time and time again where I'm around a lost person. At first, they're watching their language and they're, they're kind of tiptoeing around you know, with me. And if I don't say anything and if I'm compromising and whatever else and just trying to be nice to them and things, they'll start to use profanity. And their conversation will start to get darker and more sinful. We have to take the standard of God's Word and not compromise with it. Um, I don't have any secular friends. I don't. Can't afford to. Some guy's a Protestant or whatever else, a, a lost man, but he protests Rome and things. Well, good. Um, but I'm not going to have him come and be in regular fellowship with me. Romans chapter 12. This one ties in with the thing of being separate. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Nonconformity is the most important trait that you can possess as a Christian. You conform to this world the popular trends and styles and everything else. They're tra trying to tell you that you need to stop being so white and whatever and apologize and whatever. They're trying to get you to conform. And if you do, you cannot prove what is that good and perfect, uh, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You can't do it. You have to be separate. You have to be a nonconformist. I mean, think of the image of a wasp. I remember years ago, there were some metal pipes laying behind a shed um, at my parents' property, and I was building something for them, and I saw these metal pipes, and I thought, hey, I can, you know, take some of these metal pipes and go put them, you know, for whatever I was building at the time. And I grabbed these metal pipes, and I'm walking along, you know, and, and they're bang, bang, clang together. Next thing I know, there's wasps coming out the end of these things. And the one got me, hit me right, middle finger right in between there, you know, the tender area right on the side there. Oh, man, did that hurt. Oh, I should... I should just conform and this guy, this big guy's, you know, just carrying me along and, and I'm just going to, you know, be in here, you know, bang here. No, no. Hey, you're messing with my home. I'm coming out of this pipe and I'm going to get you. And I didn't even get to kill the thing either. I mean, it, it came and he hit me and I, ah, you know, like this and he flew off. So he lived to fight another day, you know, um, he didn't come out and say, I'm going to get the, oh, I, oh, that guy's awfully big. You know, I mean, I outweighed him by, I don't even know how much. I mean, not even, you know, maybe not even an ounce, you know, that that hornet or the wasp, you know, weighed um, much bigger, much more ferocious and whatever else. But that didn't stop him. And you know what? There's a lot of Goliaths out there, a lot of big evil things that are trying to come after us. Persecuting us just because of the my ancestry. The white man, you know, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Again, I can't change that. It's, it's who I am. You know, the only thing I could do is drop the Protestant thing, which I'm not about to do, but that's the only way I could change anything. I'm white. I'm Anglo-Saxon. You say, well, you could get interracially married or something and you get rid of that. Still doesn't change who I am. It would change who my children are. Mess them up really bad, but uh, it doesn't change who I am. So, you know, oh, we have to look out for the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant people. That's a racist statement. And I'm not okay with that. And I'm not going to conform to that. And if they want to come and try to burn my house down or something, woe be to them. It's not going to go well with them. Well, they might, uh, they might get you or something, Brian, and they might kill you or something. I'm okay with that. My ancestors, when they saw righteous causes, they said, Time to fight. I'm not okay with this thing. I'm not okay with whatever. By the way, if you've uh, noticed here my shirt, this uh, the collar scheme here, this is called Black Watch Tartan. Um, I don't just wear flannels because I like flannels or something. This is an ancient ancestral type of way to wear, or type of, type of way to wear. Well, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> this is an ancient ancestral type of clothing that my ancestors wore. The barbaric peoples, they would wear tartan, flannel, plaid, whatever you want to call it. That's what we wore. Um, and Blackwatch Tartan is of the Campbell clan. My maternal grandmother was a Campbell. So yes, I have some uh, Scottish Highlander blood in me. Okay. Um, I probably wouldn't be using this in a battle situation anymore because we use uh, other things now. But... Um, this represents something to me. This represents something very special to me. This represents strength. This represents men that didn't take any kind of nonsense, any kind of wickedness and sin. They fought. I'm not saying that they were all saved or anything else like that either, so don't misquote me or try to say it, you know, lie about me or whatever. I'm not saying that. Okay? So we have first piece of advice. You need a real sword, King James Bible.
Second piece of advice, no compromise. Stand fast in the faith. Third piece of advice, stop watching movies. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Okay? Fourth piece of advice, separate from the lost. Fifth piece of advice, don't conform to this world. Let's go on to the sixth one. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. All right. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Do you pray for politicians? Do you pray for our government? Do you pray for our nation? We're supposed to. Right there. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Why do you think politicians, these wicked, vile politicians like Donald Trump, that pervert that he was, deranged pervert, money-grubbing, Jesuit-trained devil that the man was, why do you think he acted like he was a Christian? Because there's wasps out there? That's why he wants to act like he's a wasp? Hmm. Who will have all men to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth. Those wicked politicians, they watch the wasps. They watch us. And if we're speaking truth, they'll imitate it. Why? Because we have power as Christians. The Holy Spirit indwells us. We have that power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. I'm a Protestant, and if you're doing wrong, I'm going to protest what you are doing, and I'm going to protest it to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, without having to go through some church or some hireling or whatever else that can be bought out. That's wrong because the Bible says it's wrong, and I'm going to tell my God about it, and I'm going to have the strength to come out and attack you for what you're doing. Pray for those in authority. Finally, let's go to Romans chapter 13. Oh, here we get into Romans you know, 13, the submission to the government. Uh, not hardly. <clears throat> Romans chapter 13, beginning in verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. You get these wicked idiots out there and they'll say, well, that's the, you know, because it was authorized by King James, he put that in there and whatever, so people would su submit to him or something. That's nonsense. This is what the Bible teaches um, because it's a fact. Every ruler out there is ordained of God, including Joe Biden. How does that work? Let's continue. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So you have to do whatever they say, right? Not hardly. Keep reading. Verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. A ruler is supposed to be a terror to the evil. And they come out with a lot of propaganda. We're going to ban gas stoves. We're going to ban guns. No, no more AR-15s and whatever else. But you know what? They can't do it for one second if God's people are righteous. If the wasps out there are flying around saying, I'm going to protect my home. I'm going to make sure my stinger's nice and ready to go. Um, if they're doing that, there's not one thing in this world that the wicked politicians can do to stop it. Not one. And the biggest army on this earth right now are American gun owners made up of wasps and a bunch of others. Real men that say, I'm going to protect my home. Oh, look, it's another school shooting. I probably should get more guns then. Oh, look, there was, another, there was a mass shooting and things. Then I better be armed. Hey, you know what? I'm seeing a lot more of this. You know, maybe I should start carrying a gun more often. Maybe I should step up to the plate and say, you know something, the police are clearly not stopping these shootings. Maybe I should be the one. Maybe I should be one out there. You know, certainly let the police do it if they're there. Absolutely. Hey, you know, 
congratulations, sir. Yeah, I'll, I'll be praying for you as you go in and taking care of that mass shooter. Let the police do their job. But you know what? There's no police here. The guy's shooting people. Then I better do something about it myself. Be a wasp. Not a little gnat that just flies around. Just lands on people. Uh, you know. No. Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. I don't care who the ruler is. I don't care who the politician is, whatever tyrant or something like this. If you do good, they are forced to praise you. They have to do something to make your life better. You say, but brother, um, okay, I get what you're saying, but then why are we seeing so much corruption in America? Because the people are wicked. Because God has to use the politicians to punish the wicked sinners out there, including a lot of the wasps. Righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness brings the nation up. Sin tears it down. And when you get men that should know better, men that should be using their ancestral heritage as soldiers, as fighters, to fight against the evil, and yet they turn it to yell at a screen because a team just took the ball, they're running into the other side of the field with it. Shame on you. Wickedness. Verse 4, For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. You know why a lot of wasps are afraid right now? If thou do that which is evil. That's why. You're doing things that are contrary to the scriptures. You're living in ways that are not pleasing in God's sight. You're using new versions of the Bible that come from the Vatican. New versions that make Jesus into a liar. Jesus says, I go not up to the feast yet, you know, basically. And, it, and the other versions, they take out the yet. Then Jesus goes up to the feast later on. He lied. And so many other places that the new versions change things. Mess it up. This is God's book. You want the blessing of God? You better follow the book. You better make sure that you're different. That you're not a conformist. That you're born again. You want to go to some church building and whatever else out there? There's no church buildings in the New Testament. Peter Ruckman, the great Bible scholar and everything else... As soon as you get a church building, you're anti-New Testament. You say, well, brother, we just want to have a church building. Okay, then go to your church building, but don't you dare submit when the government tells you to close the doors. And you better get away from the 501c3, and I want to write off my giving on my taxes so I can get a break. I want to go and I want to submit myself to the government and tell the, let the government tell me how to raise my children, let the government how, tell me how to run my marriage. But then I'll say, I won't accept the tyranny. How evil. Verse 6. Well, verse 5. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. America has a chance. It's not over. There will be pain. I'm not saying that it's a pain-free uh, future. But um, there's a lot of these plans that these wicked people have. And you got a right, bunch of righteous wasps sitting around and they're wasting their time. Um, we're not going to bring this nation back if we're not willing to fight. Come out of our little uh, metal pipe and go out and sting who's ever coming after us. And start to stand up. Make a difference. You need a real sword. Never compromise. Stop watching movies. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Separate from the lost. Don't conform to this world. Pray for those in authority and understand the purpose of tyrants. Joe Biden is a tyrant. Barely cognizant tyrant, but he's a tyrant nonetheless. 
But why is he still there? Because he is what America deserves. Let me ask you a question. Can God make some things happen this coming year, 2024, an election year, selection year, if you get right down to it? Can God make some things happen that would uh, eliminate a lot of the people in this nation, a lot of the problems? Yes, and we are to that point, by the way. Historically, scripturally, spiritually, whatever you want to say, logically, um, what are you going to do to make people all of a sudden agree and go back to the old America? Not happening. It's not happening. Um, without the shedding of blood is no remission, the Bible talks about. Um, there will be no remission. There will be no going back to good times and whatever else without the shedding of blood. It's just that simple. I'm just going to be honest about it. I've been saying this for a while. Um, the Bible talks about in Matthew chapter 24 in the end times that there would be wars and rumors of wars. In the last days, perilous times shall come. It's going to get perilous. That's why you need to be a wasp and not a uh, buzzing you know, house fly or something, or a little gnat. Just it goes around and it's just irritating and people just you know, swat it or whatever else. You know, I've seen grown men and you know, a wasp comes at them and they're, ah, they're running their... You know, they don't want to get stung by that wasp. Historically, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants have been the most powerful men in battle. I remember the one uh, battle way back, um, I don't remember the, the year or whatever else, I don't know if my book on, uh, it's <laughs> too many books, but uh, there was a battle between Rome and the Northern Barbarians. And the Northern Barbarians, uh, the Romans underestimated them. They, under, they underestimated those white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. See, there's no Protestant movement back then. Oh, there's always been a Protestant movement. Uh, we protest abuse. We protest evil. So yeah, in that sense, the Protestant movement has always been there. It's part of our blood. <clears throat> and this um, northern barbarian, uh, these tribes came and they fought against Rome. And Rome lost 80,000 men in the ancient world. Um, I don't even know what that would be equivalent to today. You know, millions of men in one battle. 80,000 men. And I think the emperor at the time committed suicide. Because the loss was so great. He didn't want to go back and face the Roman Senate and whatever else. Killed himself. Sword and fell on it. Um, there's a great heritage out there. And uh, you need to embrace that heritage. Find out your own ancestral thing. You say, I'm not a white Anglo-Saxon. I'm a Protestant, but I'm not a white Anglo-Saxon. Okay, then find out what your heritage is. Gird up your loins like a man. Stand strong. Take up the sword of the Spirit. And um, <clears throat> when we see the bad things coming, and they will be coming this coming year, I will promise you that. There's going to be a lot of bad. There's going to be a lot of people. A lot of people are going to die. Coming up, I will give you a word of prophecy. I believe that there will be a lot of people dying this coming year. How many? How, what's the percentage? Or No idea. But I can feel it. And you can too, if you have any sense to you at all. You can see the division. Just learned a new word today. You know what it was? Uh, you know what it was? Uh, uh, dumb naming or dead naming. Uh, dead naming, that's what it was. Dead naming. What? Huh? What's that? Oh, that's uh, somebody that's now confused about what gender they are and they don't want to be called by the name they're, they were born with. So if they're called by that, then that's called dead naming now. Yeah, um, absolutely crazy. Um, and, you know, I support law enforcement. I know that there are crooked cops out there and whatever else. I get it. I understand that. Of course there are. But um, we need to have the, to restore law and order in this nation. Um, we need to see that. And um, I will support what the Bible says I'm supposed to do. I'm going to pray for those in authority. And I'm going to pray and say, Lord... Please send those people in authority after those wicked people out there that don't follow your word, that have no use for you. I pray the Lord uses those tyrants, the bad police officers and whoever else. Go out there after the wicked. 
I want to have praise of the same. I want to be a good, hard-working man. A man that obeys law and order, that wants law and order and wants to see justice done. I'm sick and tired of seeing this nation being torn down on purpose. And I can't go out there and, and do some big rally or whatever else. You know, I'd love to, but um, there's going to need to be some suffering before the wasps really get riled up enough that they start to do something. And if you're a Catholic, white Anglo-Saxon Catholic, a wasp or something, um, I'd consider leaving that satanic cult that you're in because the Pope, your liberal little sissy Pope, he can tell you what to do just like that. And you have to do it. Because the Holy Father said so. Uh. Remember seeing a video the one time that this uh, guy was holding his little baby, and this older Catholic priest is there, and the baby's crying, and the Catholic priest, you know, he's there, and he's oh, trying to calm it down, and he gets, he gets this, this devil comes out of him, you know, and and he, he and hits the baby in the face, and this Catholic father just goes, oh, and just kind of recoils, oh, you know, don't do that, I'm going to report you to your superiors. Uh, it wouldn't have happened that way with me. Um, I'd have given that priest a knuckle sandwich. You say, you're not supposed to be a striker, Brother Brian. Yeah, but you know what? You're messing with my little baby. I'm going to lose my cool. Okay? I'll repent later. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a brawler. I'm not looking. I'm going to go and there's a Catholic priest that comes to town or whatever. I'm going to go you know, beat him up. Or, no, absolutely not. I'm not the aggressor. Again, I'm not going out and I'm attacking people and whatever else because of their race. They're coming after me, calling me a terrorist, just because of who I am. That's satanic. That's wicked. I will not conform to that. So, that is going to be it for this study. Um, we have to get serious. Because uh, right now, what is going to really affect those wasps, like I was saying earlier, uh, they need to suffer some. They need to have their home rattled. And so um, a lot of them are just asleep right now. They're in their nice little thing there, and they're just kind of, uh, you know. Um, the bad times are coming, and my hope and prayer is that the wasps awaken and uh, the Catholics out there, that you get out of that satanic church that you're in and come and say, you know what, I need to be able to protest. Work out things later on, whatever else, you know, between us fighting and whatever. Good, let's, let's have the arguments. Let's go back and forth and things and, and argue over different things of the scriptures. Sure, that's a good thing to do. Helps you to come to a better knowledge of the truth that way. But if you're in a system that you can be controlled and told to calm down and, and you know, don't say anything and just let's, let's not fight over this, uh, and you see the degradation all around you, and you're going to a church and you're told not to do anything about it, not to fight against it, not to speak against it. Better get out of that church. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. Fight. Stand strong. Stand your ground. Don't back down. They can call you terrorists. They can call you whatever else you want. We are not the terrorists. We are not the ones that are advocating violence on innocent people. We don't want violence. But if you bring it, you're going to get stung period.